in this morning and I'm wishing for everyone a wonderful and a blessed Sunday. And in the news this morning for January 14, 2024, cops launch a probe after resident finds a man's body in Clarendon. The body of a man was found by a farmer in Bransland District in Clarendon Saturday morning. The dead man has been identified as 48-year-old Wilbert Sitaram, otherwise called Buju, a resident of the district. Reports are that around 7 a.m., a resident was on his way to tend to his animals when he stumbled upon the body of the deceased and notified the police. Lawmen arrived at the scene and saw the body of a male clad in a green shirt, gray Nike pants, multicolored diamond socks, and multicolored slippers. The body was lying face down and had what appeared to be a wound to the right side of the neck, the police said. The body was positively identified at the scene and transported to the Maypen Hospital, where it was pronounced dead by doctors on duty. It was later removed to the morgue. Two 9mm spent casings were found while the scene was being processed, the police said. Body of unidentified man found in St. Anne The body of a man who is suspected to have been murdered between Friday night and Saturday morning was found in Lime Hall, St. Anne. His identity has not yet been released. The news understands that the man was shot and killed. Reports are that residents heard explosions and summoned the police. Upon the lawman's arrival, the body of the man was seen with her gunshot wounds. Police sources are theorizing that a high-powered weapon was used to kill the man. 23-year-old St. Catherine Mason shot dead a 23-year-old Mason was shot dead in the community of Gainesville in St. Catherine on Friday night. The man has been identified as Sava Fitzgerald, otherwise called the Shaka, from Cock Mountain in Guys Hill. Reports are that about 8 p.m., Fitzgerald was having a drink at an establishment when he was attacked. He was found on the ground with what appeared to be gunshot wounds. The police were summoned and Fitzgerald was later pronounced dead. No motive has been established for the shooting. Murder accused says he got a psychiatric help and a slain second wife supported him. Portland businessman Everton Beach Stout MacDonald allegedly told the police in a July 31, 2020 statement that whenever his second wife, Tonya MacDonald, was suspected of being unfaithful, he would call her out for it, put an end to her extramarital affair, and then start the process of ironing things out with her. Tonya was killed on July 20, 2020, and her burnt body with stab wounds was found in Sherwood Forest in Portland. MacDonald is charged with his wife's murder and is currently being tried in the Home Circuit Court in Kingston with a co-accused Oscar Barnes. On Friday, the court heard that MacDonald gave a very lengthy statement to cops in which he explained aspects of his love life, family life, financial status, and his health. A clerk of court read out the statement. I had to see the psychiatrist every week. Tonya assisted me. In 2011, we got married. We had been living together since. We had one issue because of our unfaithfulness, but we worked it out. I am very traumatized because I could never kill my wife. People said she participated in orgies, and I know she loved to party, MacDonald said in the statement. The businessman also told the cops that he was perturbed by people demonizing his wife on social media. I can't think of a reason why someone would want to kill her, but I didn't kill her, he said. In another statement to cops on July 21, 2020, the businessman said that he and his wife were wealthy people who did not have to work and that there were issues that came up between them sometimes. He said that his wife was not pleased after she allegedly saw nude photos of another woman in his cell phone. She put it on her status. She had a relationship with a policeman, but I intervened. I had to drive to his house and I told him to leave my wife alone. MacDonald said that he met Tonya in 2007 when he was driving past a shop owned by her mother. She was 20 years older then. We made a connection from then, MacDonald said in the statement. He went on to share that he started to assist her by financing her evening classes and other aspects of her life. He claimed that they only started having sexual intercourse two years after they met. MacDonald also told the police that he is a businessman who operates more than one business in Portland 
and has been a businessman for more than 40 years. He owns two plazas and numerous other businesses, including supermarkets. He said he is the father of four children and that he has a daughter who is a district attorney in New York and a son who is in the military. He claimed that the memories of the 2009 murder of his first wife, Merlene, always bring him back to a state of depression. He said he was not aware of Tonya having life insurance and said that he didn't take out any for himself. He also shared that his relationship with Tonya affected his first marriage to Merlene. MacDonald allegedly told the police that for 12 years prior to 2020, he had been on medication for diabetes, hypertension, and depression. Sometimes when I take the medication, I feel out of it. Sometimes I see six persons at once, he said in the statement. Two charges dismissed against the businessman in car sales fraud case. Two of the 11 fraud-related charges filed against the businessman, Akeem Adamson, for failing to turn over a total of nearly $35 million to customers whose motor vehicles he sold have been dismissed. The charges, both for fraudulent conversion, were dismissed in the St. James Parish Court on Thursday after Adamson and the two complainants completed court-ordered mediation and the businessman agreed to make restitution. He remains in custody awaiting trial on similar charges relating to two other complainants in St. James who are owed a total of nearly $11 million and the seven complainants in St. Anne who are owed a total of approximately $20 million. Donovan Collins, the attorney representing Adamson, acknowledged in court that his client collected monies from the complainants but said it was not done under false pretense and that there was no intention to deceive. Collins explained that Adamson, a licensed car dealer, has business partners in Japan who failed to honor their end of the business arrangement to ensure that motor vehicles reach Jamaica in a timely manner. He said his client recognized the problems almost one year ago and took the necessary action to ensure that approximately $40 million was refunded to some customers. But he said Adamson's arrest disrupted that process. He returns to court in St. Anne on January 16 and in St. James on January 18. Victims killed in fiery St. Anne crash are still not identified. Investigators assigned to the St. Anne Traffic Department are still working to identify the two people who were killed in a four-vehicle crash in Pear Tree, St. Anne on Friday. The collision involved a Toyota Mark X, a BMW X6 SUV, a Hilux truck, and a tour bus. Reports are that at about 3.25 p.m., a hydrotropical tour bus was traveling towards the Discovery Bay when the tour bus collided with a Toyota Mark X motor car, a BMW motor car, and a Toyota Tundra motor truck, which were traveling in the opposite direction. As a result of the impact with the bus, all three vehicles were engulfed in flames except the tour bus that ran off the roadway into a ditch. The police and the St. Anne's Bay Fire Department were contacted to conduct cooling down operations. The charred remains of two people were seen among the debris. The other occupants were taken to hospital for treatment. Man arrested, charged after nursing student is attacked and shot dead. Sleuths attached to the Elliston Road Police have now arrested and charged one man in connection with the attack and the murder of a nursing student in Kingston. Charged is a 34-year-old Nevada Roberts, otherwise called Bees, construction worker of Victory Street, Kingston 16. Reports are that the female identified as Kimberly Jones, a 31-year-old nursing student, was walking along the roadway in January of last year when Roberts and another man reportedly pounced on her and opened gunfire, hitting her in the upper body. She was taken to hospital, where she later succumbed to her injuries. Investigations later led to the arrest of Roberts. He was subsequently charged with the possession of a prohibited weapon and unauthorized the possession of ammunition. His court date is being finalized.